Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to start the journey of learning about photosynthesis. Um, so a little quick review about cell parts. Um, here's an animal cell over on the left-hand side, and these are plant cells over on the right-hand side. And you can compare the actual animal cell versus the actual plant cell. Um, some cell parts to just remember, cell membrane controls what comes in and out of the cell. Cell walls, what gives these plant cells a rigid structure. Cytoplasm is the liquid inside of the cell. Nucleus is where the DNA is stored. Uh, mitochondria um, is where cellular respiration takes place. Um, it's found in both plant cells and animal cells. And then the chloroplast is found specifically um, in plant cells, and that's where photosynthesis takes place. So before we get into um, the, the fine details of photosynthesis, you have to understand a few different things. So I'm going to start with chloroplast structure. So this is a chloroplast found exclusively in plant cells. Um, a chloroplast has two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Um, once you go inside of the two membranes, um, there's like a liquidy part called the stroma. Um, and these little stacks that kind of look like stacks of green pancakes are called thylakoid membranes. And these thylakoid membranes will come in handy when we start talking about the details of photosynthesis. Um, but when you have a stack of thylakoid membranes um, together, that's called a granum. So the, the different parts you need to know, you have the outer and inner membrane, the thylakoid membranes, which get stacked to form, form a granum, and then the stroma, which is the liquid inside. Um, a pigment that we're going to talk about called chlorophyll, um, which is responsible for absorbing the light needed for photosynthesis to occur. Um, that pigment lives inside the thylakoid membranes. Um, a chloroplast has its own DNA um, and is actually able to reproduce independently of the cell. Um, it is thought to be an ancient symbiotic life form that was once absorbed by a larger cell. The other thing you need to know um, before we get into the fine details of photosynthesis is a little bit about lights and pigments. Um, so the energy from the sun enters the Earth's uh, biosphere as photon, and a photon is basically the light energy unit. Um, a photon works as both a particle and a wave. Uh, you don't need to know all the details of that, uh, but light has different wavelengths. The length between um, the crest of each wave, right? Think of ocean waves, how they hit one after another after another. The distance between each of those waves is called the wavelength. Um, and different colors of light have different wavelengths. Uh, all of these things, from gamma rays to x-rays, ultraviolet rays, radar, um, radio waves, FM and AM, TV waves, those are all types of light. Um, but the light that you can see with your eyes um, is called the visible light spectrum. And the wavelength on the visible light is somewhere between 380 nanometers to about 750, 760 nanometers. Um, and that's what we can see. Um, that's important um, because chlorophyll, which is a pigment, and pigments absorb light. Um, and chlorophyll is found um, within the thylakoid membranes in a chloroplast. Um, chlorophyll, A and B, they absorb certain wavelengths of light. So they absorb this um, violet and blue wavelength. They absorb this uh, red wavelength, but they don't absorb this middle area or this green wavelength, um, which is why plants appear green to the eye, because they're absorbing um, the blue and purple light and they're absorbing the red light and reflecting the green light, which is what your eye see. Um, your eye see the light that's reflected off of surfaces. Um, you can see that in the graph here, right? So they're absorbing the wavelengths in the four to 500 range and then from like the 650 to 700 range, but they're not absorbing this middle wavelength, which is uh, for green light. So photosynthesis um, is more complicated than just the equation. Yes, you need to know the equation and memorize it. It's carbon dioxide plus water makes glucose and oxygen. And honestly, just put sixes in front of all of those things besides glucose. So six CO2 plus six H2O goes to make glucose, which is C6H12O6. Glucose is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are in a one to two to one ratio. Um, six, 12, six. 
um, and then six oxygen. At its basic form, photosynthesis uses light energy to make glucose out of carbon dioxide and water. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, this is the level of complexity you need to know. We can go a little bit further if we wanted to, um, especially when we talk about the Calvin cycle. Uh, but if you can understand what's happening in this picture, you can understand the basics of photosynthesis. So what do you need for photosynthesis to occur? We need light energy, which we see here, water, which we see here, and carbon dioxide. Um, we're going to take photosynthesis as two steps. Step one is called the light-dependent reaction, where the energy from the sun is absorbed, uh, and that's used to create these high-energy molecules, which you see here. Um, the second part of the reaction is when carbon dioxide is transformed and turned into glucose, and that's called the dark reaction or the light-independent reaction or the Calvin cycle. Um, so let's start on this side. Um, the light-dependent reaction um, happens inside the thylakoid membranes. So that's why it's happening in this little stack here. Um, this is where light is absorbed, um, and the energy from light being absorbed uh, basically allows for these two molecules, ADP and NADP+, to be transformed into their more energetic forms, ATP and NADPH. Um, those are high energy carrying molecules, um, but they don't last for a long time. Uh, they only last for a few minutes. So that energy needs to be transformed into a form of energy that the plant can store for longer periods of time. That's where um, the light independent reaction takes place, where carbon dioxide is absorbed through the plant tissues. Um, the energy from ATP and NADPH is used up to transform these carbon dioxide molecules into glucose. Um, you need six carbon dioxide molecules to make one glucose. Um, and then what happens is because you use that energy, the less energetic forms, ADP and NADP+, uh, then go back to the light reaction, get re-energized by the sunlight and the splitting of water um, to make more ATP. And this cycles over and over and over again with the end goal of making glucose. A little about ATP and NADPH. Um, so during the normal day um, in a single uh, plant cell, even in just a single chloroplast, many molecules of the ATP and NADPH are made, but they're unstable, only lasting for a few minutes. And so the plant cells need to make long-term storage energy molecules. Um, and that's where this Calvin cycle comes in. Um, the Calvin cycle, also known as the light independent reaction or the dark reaction, many names for the same thing here. Um, but that's the last step of photosynthesis. That's where you use the energy from ATP and ADPH to form high energy sugars. Um, this is actually what the carbon cycle looks like. Um, if you ever do take AP biology, you'll have to learn each one of the steps kind of along the way and how this works. Uh, in regular biology, you don't have to learn that. Um, just know the basis, right? Where um, you use the energy from ATP and NADPH along with carbon dioxide to make glucose. One final thing, um, one byproduct I didn't talk about, but it's super vital for us, is oxygen. So in this first part of the reaction, the light dependent reaction, um, what's happening is this water molecule is actually being split up into its parts, which are hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen gets released um, as a byproduct that the plant doesn't need. Um, that's a very useful byproduct for us because that's how we get the oxygen we need to breathe and the oxygen you need to do cellular respiration in your body. Uh, but really, the plant cell uses the hydrogen molecules um, to attach to these two um, low energy four molecules to make these AD, uh, ATP and NADPH molecules. So that was our brief overview of photosynthesis. Um, if you feel like you didn't necessarily get all of that, I would suggest either watching it again um, looking at your notes again, or maybe watching a crash course video. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Have a good day.